My brothers and sisters in Christ, today the Church celebrates the beautiful feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, a wonderful feast that follows nine months after we celebrate the Immaculate Conception uh, every December 8th. Thus, on September 8th, the Church celebrates Mary's birth. Before I share a, a brief reflection on today's readings, I invite you to sit back and watch a, a video prepared by one of our Youth Confirmation candidates, Lauren, that will provide a little more context about this feast. The Feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary is celebrated on September 8th. This is a celebration of Mary's birth. Mary's parents, St. Anne and St. Joachim, prayed to God for a child, and their prayers were answered. As Mary grew up, she always had the presence of God with her. The church only celebrates the births of three important people. They are Jesus, which is on December 25th, known as Christmas, John the Baptist, which is celebrated on June 24th, and Mary on September 8th. The rest of the saints are celebrated on the day of their deaths. We celebrate Mary's birth because she was the plan of salvation. She is the hope and light of the whole world. With her birth begins a new time of grace and salvation in Jesus Christ. As we celebrate the Feast of, Na of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, let us love one another. Let us hope for a better tomorrow and live with love and great patience in knowing great times are to come. Every time we celebrate her birth, we hope for an increase of peace in our hearts for the whole world. As a craft, you and your family can come together and bake a cake and celebrate the birth of the Blessed Virgin Mary. You may use blue candles, include a statue or picture of Mary, and be sure to sing Happy Birthday to her. Thank you for that reflection, Lauren. Today's feast is a beautiful reminder of God's providence as it plays out not only in human history, salvation history, but in our lives, even though so frequently it's undetected by us in our limited vision. The beautiful first reading, there's two options for the first reading today, but the reading from the prophet Micah comes in the aftermath of the devastation of Israel and the Babylonian exile and even then points to the coming, the one from which the king to restore Israel will come from. And this points to the Blessed Virgin Mary. So even in the midst of utter devastation, hundreds of years before already, the pointing is happening to how God will clean up the mess, so to speak. And so when we hear in the gospel, the long genealogy of the gospel of Matthew, it sounds just like a list of names that are difficult to pronounce. And yet, in fact, it's weaving where God's touch has been throughout human history to work towards our salvation. And when we look at the list of names, we should always be impressed by some of them are people that you've never heard of. Some of them are great figures from the scriptures and have mighty stories or lifetimes of faith attached to them. And some of them are frankly just very sinful people. And yet throughout this, through the good, through the bad, God is weaving a tapestry for the salvation of his people. This is an important reminder for us. Undoubtedly, probably outside of the family of Saints Joachim and Anne, probably no one noticed or paid much attention to the birth of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Sure, it was the birth of a child, a wonderful moment in every family, and yet nothing marked or pointed for the world to take notice of the birth of this child. And yet in it, God was already preparing the way through her immaculate conception, her birth for the coming of the Savior. How little could anyone have known in the midst of the struggles of their lives that God's salvation was going into effect, even though no one could see it. This is true not only for salvation history, but for our lives. We cannot see the handprint of grace at all times. In the midst of our most, you know, our greatest challenges, our darkest hours, God is still working his grace in the midst of us. He is working for our good. The other first reading for today from St. Paul's letter, the fact that God makes all things work for the good for those who love him. 
God is in the midst of every situation. Wherever we find ourselves on this day, God is at work with us and in us and around us, and he is working towards our good. He simply asks that we be faithful, that we trust that we allow him to use us as his instrument as well to others so that his salvation might be known to all. But for the time being, even when we can't see, even when there's no sign of hope visible to us, God is there in the midst, waiting to reveal his salvation in ways we cannot comprehend. Blessed Virgin Mary, always point us the way to your Son, who is truly the source of our hope. O Sacred Heart of Jesus, we place all our trust in you.